Good afternoon. Welcome to all of you as we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ to celebrate this holy meal. Today we hear both Sirach and Jesus counsel us to act with humility. Sirach tells us we will find favor with God, and Jesus imagines a wedding banquet where the host invites the person who took the lowest place to move up to a higher position. Your presence at this Mass speaks of your humility. You are showing that you are aware that you depend on the Lord. You can't do it all by yourself, and you are showing that you owe God for all in your life. You are here to say thanks. So it is with a humble heart that we listen today to the Word of God. Instead of exalting ourselves, Christ invites us to follow his example and humble ourselves. Tonight we are remembering and praying for Charles Simon. Tomorrow's Mass is for Trudy Barley. And our sanctuary light will burn in memory of Jack and Kristen White. We will have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament this Friday morning, and next weekend blood pressure checks will be offered. I'm happy to say we have another new server with us tonight, Morgan Bush. She asked Sam to cover up all her mistakes, but we're very happy to have her. We thank her. Let us now rise. Good afternoon. Please join us in singing our opening song as we gather at your table, hymn 311 in the songbook. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us Christ your to forgive as you forgave. May we still behold your image in the world you died to save. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always. Indeed, we, Christ, may live again this day each time we bring his good through us to others around us. As we open our prayer, let us open ourselves to all that the Christ may inspire us to do. Lord Jesus, you came to offer your life for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to give of ourselves to each other. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, fill us with your life and your love. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture within us all that is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe all that you have given us. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus, who lives one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. just rejoice and exalt before God, they are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the Lord. The father of orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the Lord. A bountiful rain you shower down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restored the land when it languished, your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided it for the needy. God. reading from the letters to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could not be touched in a blazing fire and gloomy darkness, and storm and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and countless angels in feastal gathering in the assembly of the firstborn enrolled into heaven. And the God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect. And Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. says the Lord, and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a Sabbath, 
Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing Jesus carefully. Jesus told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. Jesus said, when you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of all your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself shall be exalted. Then Jesus said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back, and then you have your repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will then be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Then he said to the one who invited him, these words are from our Gospel this evening, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Of course, the one who invites Jesus into his home to have a dinner, to share good things for someone who he cares about, that one who invites Jesus into their lives, hopefully, for the gospel, is each of us. This is what Jesus, or where Jesus wants us to put ourselves in this particular passage of the gospel, we're the ones who invited Jesus. We're the ones who threw this big dinner. But yet at the same time, when we enter the lives of others who invite us, and Jesus has a word about that too, that indeed we must be humble, realizing that all that we have, all that we share, everyone that is doing good for me, is because God created that way. God made the world that way to bring his goodness to everyone and no less to each of us. You know, they say that humility is not thinking less of myself. You shouldn't think any less of yourself. You're a child of God. God loves you. There isn't another one like you. God has a place for you for all eternity. Don't think less of yourself. No, the saying goes, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. You know, that's that whole word, selfless. I'm, that person is very selfless. They're thinking less of themselves as to what they can do for others. Well, so it is. With this kind of humility, Jesus says, God created you within this world 
not to play the most important person and what others can do for me. For Jesus said, take a look at what I'm doing here. I'm the Son of God, and you, you call me that, and yeah, I am. Now that makes me pretty important on the old roster here. But that's not what Jesus saw as being important. What was important for him, what was God considered important? To reach out to others, to do whatever good I could do. That's why Jesus says to the one who invited him into their lives, into their home, when you give a dinner, don't give it or do stuff where you expect people to return the favor, so to speak. You know, so often that's what gets us so bent out of shape. I did this, and I did that, and I did this for you, and I did that, and on and on and on we go. Hardly humility, but anyway. Then we, get our, we have a, a life that's unhappy, unsettled, never makes never meets what I think it ought to be because people just don't appreciate me. Now, what I should be doing is serving others, looking out for their good, seeing everybody as a child of God. And what can I do for you? Maybe I don't know enough right now. I don't have enough, but I'll find something. I'll, I'll do anything I can. And that's what Jesus says, invite all these people who nobody cares about, the poor, the lame, the beggars. These were people that never got invited to a rich person's home like Jesus did. And it's interesting that Jesus was invited to this home on a Sabbath, on a Sunday. On a, well, actually, the Sabbath was for the Jews, was the last day of creation where God looked upon all he created and saw was good. Okay? What's so good about it, Jesus is saying? Well, I'll tell you, when you serve others and look out for each other, then it's really good for everybody. And when we get to the kingdom of heaven, you know, Jesus so often warns us that what we think heaven is, maybe is not the way it is. You know, where I get rewarded for all the stuff I've done, blah, blah, blah. No, no, heaven is a place where God, Jesus says, serves us. Gives us all kinds of good things for all eternity. The service of others who are less than me, God, is himself that way. You know, I always think of the one story, and I'll conclude with that, that I heard, um, there's many different ways this story can be told, but there was this man who was a pretty selfish kind of guy, didn't think about anybody but himself. He died. And when he got to the gates, St. Peter says to him, okay, here is what this is all about for you. Here's a 10-foot spoon, and I want you, the only rule is, you're going to have this nice banquet table with all this food, and you got to use this spoon. Well, some might call it heaven, but I mean, might call it hell, but anyway, there was this long banquet table filled with all these favorite foods, and everybody there had a 10-foot spoon. And everybody was frustrated and angry and bitter because they couldn't feed themselves. They just tried as best they could. Finally, the man said, St. Peter, he said, well, what's heaven like? And St. Peter said to him, you get the same spoon in heaven. Only everybody in heaven is using that spoon to feed each other. You know, maybe we ought to think about all the things we have and why we have them because of the goodness of God and see whatever I can do, I am here to serve you because thank you, God, for inviting me to the kingdom of heaven 
and this wonderful dinner. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand as once again we profess our beliefs. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Again, we bring our needs to our Father in heaven. For Pope Francis, that by his humble example, we may all learn the ways of humility and simplicity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For church leaders, may they follow Jesus' command to embrace lowliness and reject the glamour of power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people of the world who are homeless, orphaned, or widowed, may they receive all that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work to provide for the homeless and the hungry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of the earth, may God guide us in being good stewards of God's creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world and for the needs of the people in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may we be a welcoming place for all who are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Charles Simon and Trudy Barley, for whom our masses are being offered, and for our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, may we truly show many the way to the kingdom of heaven where your love dwells forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our offertory song is Table of Plenty, hymn 310 and the songbook. Come to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty, God will provide for all that we need, here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table, where saints and sinners are friends.
swear down by brothers and sisters that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all this holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, truly confer on each of us a blessing of your love, that what it celebrates in your mysteries, it may truly accomplish within power within each of us. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus, who lives one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that always, everywhere we give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, for you truly laid the foundations of our world. You have arranged the, the changing of times and seasons, forming each of us in your own image, setting us over your world with all of its wonder. And so we praise you for your mighty works in the name of Jesus as we sing. You walk with each of us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is Jesus, for we are gathered again by his love. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send your spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body, the blood of Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said a blessing. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and gave you thanks. He then gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, we celebrate this memorial of Jesus Christ, for you led him through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and now he is seated at your right hand. Look with favor on the sacrifice of your church, in which we once again see the very sacrifice of Jesus for us all. Grant that we all may be counted now and unto the day of eternity to share the banquet table with Jesus in heaven. 
By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of Jesus, together with John Paul, our, with Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, and all of your people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of these times by the light of our faith, may constantly devote ourselves to following the way of Jesus. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring everyone the good news of the invitation of Jesus to the joys of heaven. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you have known. Admit their spirit this day to rejoice in the light of your face. And in the resurrection of our bodies at the end of time, give us all the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly time is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place, living with you forever. For there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her loving spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, Saint Maurice, and all of the saints, together we shall praise and exalt you, surrounded by the light and love of Jesus the Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. share the bread of heaven itself as we pray for our daily bread. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from every distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of all in your church. Graciously grant to each of us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As we are invited to this table of Jesus in this world, so let us be about inviting others to the table of the kingdom of heaven. Let's share some peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is Here I Am, Lord, hymn 394 in the songbook.
let us pray. Once again, fed by this bread from the heavenly table on this earth, we ask, Lord, that being the food of charity for one another, that we truly may be humble, seeing the way of Jesus as serving the good of all your world forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is How Great Thou Art, hymn 432 in the songbook. the you